Hey guys, Dark Knight Flyer here, and today I thought I'd do something a bit different, because I know I've seen these tier lists going around. I, I mainly saw from like iDubs first, and I know they've been used a lot already, but I, I wanted to chime in, get my two cents out of this, and just make my own tier list. And of course I picked Destiny, the most like fucking pinpointed thing I could talk about. Like I, I couldn't have made something like that anybody could watch it's just like yeah okay destiny content cool because everybody wants me or wants to see like destiny and all the dlcs released but i don't know i thought it would suit like i don't know i just thought i'd do it myself because for a while i did want to do a video talking about the dlcs and i think this is this video like just making a tier list of all the dlc sorry for being disorganized i kind of just took images and put them straight in um, but as I like talk to you here now about this, it's like Destiny's been through a lot of different DLC changes and of course Destiny 2 is a thing as well So, you know, I, I can't wait to actually start talking about this once I uh, my OCD uh, kicks out, you know So, you know, just put that here. It doesn't even matter of me organizing these I know but like it, it just will look better in the long run This one goes over here so yeah, um, I think where we should just obviously start is with Destiny 1. Oh yeah, and by the way, you can see how it's like S, 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 A, B, C, D, F. I am purposely left E out because like the amount of times people just have like empty space and they're like, ah, oh, we'll just throw this here, we'll throw this there, we'll throw that there, you know? And of course, S, S is for special boys, but the original Destiny, now I I'm just going to drop it somewhere just so I can talk about it, right? So Destiny 1 was like an amazing concept at first you know like pretty much people from Bungie who made Halo and then you know people who like publish uh, Call of Duty came together and were like uh, let's make a game for the next 10 years it's weird like Destiny's a 10 year old game technically even though like it's probably been uh, deleted and remade and so on and so forth but we have this now don't get me wrong Destiny is really confusing like the story barely makes any sense the grimoire cards are like so bad that you had to actually go on bungee website to read them and shit you can't read them in game um but i'm not a true og i think i started around dark below or end of dark below because then i remember the house of wolves trailer but other than that like i'd say like um based on my experience like have just coming in from dark below i guess and based on the story of this, the oh, don't get me wrong, actually, as well, Fall to Glass will just always be forever the OG raid. Like, I know in Destiny 2 they have the um, Leviathan, like the uh, whole thing, but it's just not going to work. So, I'm going to have to put Destiny at a, yeah, you know what, I'll leave it at B. Because, like, I would have given it A if the story had something. Nah, not even if the story had something. Maybe if I was more of an OG, I'd probably put a higher... But because I'm not really an OG, I can't really say for much. Like, I wasn't really in for the beta either. I wish I was. That's another thing I should put there, but it's too late now. We're, we're already doing this, so. Uh, anyway. The Dark Below. Now, the Dark Below was something as well. Um, let me just put it here for now. I, of course, was playing during this time. That's when I started playing it. And I think... In a sense, the Dark Below does mean something to me, but nothing at the same time. Because I didn't even know it existed. Like, I just knew Destiny is Destiny. And then it's like, oh, if you want to do more, get the DLC. Or maybe I was a part of the first. Because the Triumph said I was a part of the, um... I think he was saying it was part of D1 Air. But I didn't complete some in the D1 Air. And then, like, you know, this came out. I was like, oh, cool. But in terms of content and stuff... Like, I know people look back on the raid and be like, oh my god, it's such a lazy attempt of the raid. Everybody loves it, though. Like, you can't deny that. Everybody loves Crota now. Like, again, Crota will be another one of them, like, OG raids. Like, just because it was so short, it's listy, like, strike length. You could legitimately go in yourself and complete the raid. Like, that's how easy it is. Or at least, like, as, um, light level increase. Man, I, I miss saying light level. But, you know, um, other than that... The story kind of makes sense in a sense, you know, you're trying to stop Crota from, you know, doing all the shit. I actually don't even remember what. So I'm going to give Crota A. I'm going to give um, the Dark Below A. Oh, sorry. My fucking spit just gathering in my throat. 
But yeah, then next we have is House of Wolves. Of course, I remember the trailer for this and shit. And I remember being like, oh, that looks so cool. Let's, let's see what happens with that. But to be honest, I can't remember much that happened with it. And it's kind of disappointing that the Destiny um, House of Wolves raid never happened. Because I, I think it was leaked or something. I don't know if that's false or not. But, you know, as you can see from um, Destiny 2's... Uh, a like first uh, expansions like they both have raids and seeing like these two and like only one of them having raid that's like short but the other one just not having raid at all is meh but don't get me wrong I like prison of elders as well actually since like I don't know I just like barracks and shit and I like the concept I guess of just going in shooting shit getting out I don't know I'm a very simple minded person um hmm so house of wolves I, I I don't know, I really like the end sequence where you find Skolas and all of a sudden he just like freezes and goes to the ground and just like this net thing that's covering him then he gets lifted up. I'll always remember that when it comes to House of Wolves. And I'll always remember my own solo run of House of Wolves or uh, Skolas as well. Because I believe I did it without dying as well, like that's how good I am at that. So yeah, fuck it, that goes A as well. I know, people are probably like, oh my god, why aren't you rating any of these, like, trash? That's because I have a different opinion. Oh, and let's real quick talk about price. Destiny by itself, at the time, shouldn't have cost 60 quid. It probably should have been, in my opinion, 50, 55 quid. And the DLCs, I cannot remember what they cost. I think it was 30, because they're 30. Or something like that, anyway. Like, so I can't really comment on their price, but I, I guarantee you it was 60. Unless I'm wrong. Which is the most likely scenario. I probably am wrong. Anyway. There's just no denying it. I'm sorry. The Taken King. Oh. Just such a good fucking DLC. Like. Man. It's a pity though. Like this probably would have originally siphoned shit out of this one. But the way that was made was really well worth it to me at the time. If it deserved a 40 euro mark. Mm, kinda. I'd say like 90% to 10% who deserved the um, uh, 40 euro mark. But maybe it should have been reduced to like 30, 35. But then again, if you do a 30, it's literally the same as these two. And I don't think you should compare these two to this or these two to that. Definitely not these two anyway. But the Taken King, the, just so much, uh, so much memories and shit. Like, the amount of friends I made just from playing Destiny during the Taken King era is just fucking... Oh, man. Oh, nah, I, I can't get over it. And, like, they added Rift. Now, I will admit, though, there was some bad shit with it that we need to address as well. How pretty much Crucible and shit was locked to people who had, like, these, pretty much. And it was a shit show, so I do apologize. Or, no, I, I don't need to fucking apologize on Bungie's behalf. But I do like see where people come from where they don't like Destiny 1 and how DLCs work, but I just really love this DLC, so I'm leaving it there. Rise of Iron, right. So, to be fair, right, I'm just dropping it here for now. It was something, but I feel like this DLC should be worth 15 quid. That's just my genuine opinion, alright? I'm sorry. Like... It's taken a full year to make. There's no other DLCs in between. 30 quid. I think it was like three... No, wait, that's three story missions. Only a few story missions. Granted, like, at least... Yeah, again, story in that. Fucking love it. And then story in this, like, it makes sense. I'm all right with it. Um, my Titan was a real fucking fan of the Iron Lords. Then after playing DLC, he's kind of, like, lost. He's just like, oh, they're, they're kind of all dead and shit. And, yeah, and now hearing all stories about Drifter and shit, so... But other than that, like... This DLC didn't really spark anything too much for me. Maybe the raid. Like, I love the raid. Like, it, it was such a nice step back from Taken King, but in a good way, to, like, say, hey, you know what? We, we don't ne really need to make a really hard raid. We just want to make a really fun raid. And it was Fallen, you know, for a change as well. And the only people in Destiny 1 that never got a raid was, like, the Cabal. And I'm guessing the Cabal would have gotten a raid if there was, like, extra DLCs in between uh, Taken King and Rise of Iron. So, but yeah, in general, I like the plague lands. I like the snowy atmosphere. Oh, I don't know. Hmm. 
I, I'm not sure. Sorry, let's just get rid of that. For now, I'll leave it at B. I might change my mind, but I'll leave it at B for now. So, right, Destiny 2 Original. Now, I'm just going to put this here for now. I might just leave it there. But Destiny 2 was disappointing to say, uh, nonetheless. But it was also really... It was really cool, though. Like, it was disappointing how we couldn't bring over our gear. It was disappointing, like, how Destiny 1 won't continue the way it is now. And, like... Don't get me wrong, I actually really like a lot of shit in Destiny 2 now. Like, at least the story makes sense. But I don't like how it, like, pretty much right. First mission. Oh no, everybody's lost the light. Now we have to defeat Gaul. Second mission in. Oh look, we got our light back. We're the only ones in the fucking solar system got it back. Like, what? What? Are you serious? I I'm sorry, but that moment really did piss me off. And, like, what pissed me off as well, like, the first mission or two, right, where, like, you're on uh, the city and you walk around to go to the farm, they were really good. I wish there was more missions in Destiny like that. It was more cinematic and shit. Like, I think they can do it. If they did it like that, I'd be happy. And then if they made story missions like quests or some shit instead, you know, to, like, factor in, like, the down quality in it. But, like, I don't know, like, it is disappointing, to say the least. And, like, looking at it, though, at least it had a lot of content. That's a thing people really wanted for a long time with Destiny is content. And Activision helped them do that for a bit until, well, of course, you know, after Forsaken, they're like, LOL XD, we're gone. Or Bungie were like, LOL XD, we're gone from Activision. So, yeah. Uh, other than that, like, I didn't like how they brought back Maida and shit. <laughs> Sorry, automatic decline. Uh, I didn't like how they brought back Maya and shit. I, I don't know. Because I was kind of expecting, you know what, if we're refreshing, we might as well refresh. But I know now they add a lot of weapons back. But at least they they try and give them something different. Like, the Black Spindle is now Whisper of the Worm. And then, like, Outbreak Prime is now Outbreak Perfected. And that has, like, different perks on them and shit. Unfortunately, though, Whisper of the Worm is now complete garbage. It's literally just like any other sniper. Um, that has that perk i can't remember the perk oh my god no that's annoying me but anyway anyway moving on from that now nah, i'm giving it a c i can't keep everyone at the same level i can't rate this the same as that in terms of memory so yeah i'll leave it there and now i kind of want yeah i'll put you down here as well yeah right destiny 2 curse of osiris i'm sorry it was i don't know man like it just annoys me especially because of Activision's quote they're saying this DLC did really well on our part and Bungie were like lol no it didn't like it didn't do good for us you know but like sorry I thought I heard something anyway um but yeah like Curse of Osiris man like it disappointed me as well as like how the fucking strikes were literally rehashed from story missions I was that kind of alright with it at first. I thought they'd change a bit more about it, but it's literally just the same thing, different dialogue. And sometimes I'm alright for rehashing content when needs be, like... But, like, I don't know, full strikes? Like, with strikes, at least in, um... Destiny, when they're remade, they look cool. and They look really good, you know? And, like, they kind of have, like, different shit in it to kind of differentiate it, but... With the Curse of Osiris, man, just now. Nah. And don't get me started on fucking Mercury size. Like, Mercury should have been giant. Or not giant, but I'd say, like, small enough. But, like, not as small as it is now that you can't even spawn sparrows. And the infinite forest that they hyped up. Oh, my God. Like, don't get me wrong. It is cool, the infinite forest. But I wish it was patrollable. Like, Mercury is just so small without the infinite forest. Like, if they literally just let the infinite force open at any time for us to walk through and do patrols, like, that'd be cool, you know? Just, it's the infinite force. Maybe spawn some patrol beacons out of thin air or some shit. I don't know. Make us go into the past, present, and the future and do some patrols, you know? But yeah, I'm sorry. Just Curse of Pizarus is... It's a low blow for me. It's almost what got me out of Destiny 2. I was literally just so... I don't know. After Destiny 2 initial release... I was like, alright, hopefully Destiny 2 Curse of Osiris is cool, because Osiris himself is in it. And they didn't really... I don't know. 
I, I still kind of like him. I'm not really big on his design either, but like, you know, I like his show, Sagira. But anyway, Warmind. Now, with Destiny's uh, 2 Warmind, it was a good comeback since, like, I think originally they were meant to release the DLC in February or March and they delayed it till May, which is a really good call. It's good that they were allowed to do that. It's unfortunate, though, that this is the one with three story missions. Because it is really cool, Anna Brain shit. Like, I never really was interested in Anna Brain shit until, well, of course, I realized, oh, shit, it's Anna Bray. And, um, yeah, honestly, other than that, they did really good puzzles and shit. Which is a really nice um, thing to just add into the game. To do on top of what they already had. The exotics were kind of cool. You know, bring back Sleeper and whatnot. Uh, the raid, I, I hear it's like really good and complex, like Taken King level. And I haven't played it myself, so I can't give an opinion on the raid. The strikes, unfortunately, are rehashed. But honestly, I have to give it this. Because I remember having good times during Warvind. Just being like, you know what, I'm back into Destiny again. Right, Forsaken. Um, mm, yeah, I can't put them on the same level, so it's going to have to be S. When it came to Forsaken... Mm, yeah, so pretty much, like, the story in Forsaken is still going to this fucking day. And actually, Forsaken is a branch on from the Taken King. Like, in terms of story. Which is fucking weird, and it's like, what the fuck, really? Like, after all this time, the story of this is still going in this. And man, like, it is weird when you look back at it and shit. But I kind of... I don't like, of course, how to kill Kate. Because I really fucking love Kate and he's the only thing left. But Nathan said he, like, or was going to leave anyway, either way, I think. So, there's that. But other than that, like... I don't know, Forsaken did a lot of shit right, it changed a lot of stuff, it made it all a bit better. I think it was when the big update came with it, so that's why it gets praise as well. I don't think... If we're comparing these two, it's not that's not worth 40 compared to that. This is worth 35 if that's 40, in my opinion. But yeah, and then the raid, oh, the raid's really fucking good. I Like, for a long time I was like, can we have a boss that's, like, a new race or boss? And they added a few new races in it. Like, the one strike, it is a reskin of a wizard, so, like, I'm kind of not big on that. But Riven herself is like, okay, fair enough. They added a fucking giant space dragon that's taken. That That's pretty cool, actually, you know? And, like, I've done the end of the raid a few times. It's kind of, it, it's really, really cool, like, and shit. And how you, like, the um different boss battles and... How you're taking the heart from, like, literally inside her and putting it into this yoke. And, oh, look, cool, it's all done. And now we're cursed all over the city. Which, of course, that's another cool thing. How, like, the raid, for once, affected how a, a whole environment in Destiny acted. Like, that's weird. Like, first world, or the world's first, determined the fate of, like, the Dream City. Honestly, it would have been kind of cool if everybody was, if we all knew that. I was like, wait, what if we never do anything? Then Destiny are just like, oh, or Bungie are just like, ah, oh, come on, just do it. Fucking, you. you won't get more content if you don't do this. But yeah, other than that, there's a lot of different shit in it. And it's Shatter Throne as well is a good example of good content as well. It's like, if you merge, like, no, it is literally just a Crota type experience, but properly adjusted for three people. It's like a mini raid, you know? So yeah, overall, Destiny Forsaken, uh, an S. Black Armory. Now, there was a lot of issues with Black Armory when it first released. Um, firstly, the timed shit of how each forge will unlock weekly. Like, if you're really in a rush to find all the forges, you'd find them like as fast as possible. And yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't really like that. Like, how they were doing the whole, like, annual pass shit. Like, with uh, spreading out content and whatnot. I always prefer, like, the story-driven kind of DLCs. Like, even that I prefer over that. But, um... I don't mind the concept. It's just, I don't really have a big attachment to it, though. Like, don't get me wrong. I love the black and red shader. It's just, oh, it's just everything. And the raid that came with this, though, is really good. So, there's that. Oh, now I'm, now I don't know. Nah, I'll even see. 
if there's anything else in that that made it better, I would have put it there. But then again, this is using what I was talking about, how, like, the story should be all cinematic and shit, and then all the quest shit should all be, like, normal. And, like, Black Army didn't really add any areas, neither... Well, no, yeah, that didn't, never mind. Yeah, this didn't really add any major areas, let's say, sorry. Because it did add four new areas. But, like, they're already extensions of, um... Uh, place that already exists, Jesus, Joe. But I wish, though, that they'd, like, extend the areas just for, like, Destiny 2. Not just Destiny 2 Forsaken Annual Pass holders, you know? Because after a while, Destiny 2 players will get bored. And, like, especially when they took out Trials and stuff. I kind of forget they still have that out. Like, they took out Trials of the Nine. They took out, like, the week or, yeah, the, um, faction rallies. Man, I remember grinding them. And now, like, when they ended, it was like, oh, cool. Finally, this... Thing will be put on halt for a bit so I can relax. Then I learned that Trials is gone as well. My mate was like, well, I'm done with Destiny. <laughs> that was pretty much it. But now he's um, getting back into Destiny 2. Probably readying up for Penumbra. But yeah, other than that, my final call on the Black Armory. Joker's Wild, right? So, so far I'll just put it here. So Joker's Wild, it's cool. Yeah, it's, it is really cool how the Nine and him tie... They added, like, the dialect and um, the Nine Realm type place. Well, it's all counted as the dialect. But still, it's really cool, though, how they did all that. And along with that... Oh, yeah, I meant to also mention with this how they added Whisper Worm Quest, I think it was. Which was fucking really cool. But other than that, uh, for this, they added the Zero Hour, technically, as well. And that really makes me happy because I love the secret quests, secret missions and all that. They're really cool. Um, pretty much on day one or two, I already got the weapon. Um, but other than that, I really like the Drifter story, I guess. And I like the Emissary of the Nine's backstory, too. But along with that, I like the um, uh, Invitation of Nine, how they'd give a story per week as well. Just like back in Forsaken, how you visit Mara each week and she give you a little bit of dialogue and shit about the pyramid ships. But uh, other than that, I think I'm leaving that there. Um... No raid, unfortunately, but I kind of understand because, like, trying to milk out, like, four raids. Wait, yeah, is it? Wait, so Forsaken, one, yeah, one, two, three, four. That'd be four raids total. Like, that's just too much, you know? I, I, I can't imagine actually doing that, having four raids at once. Um, but other than that, I also like the choice as well, how... With the Drifter, you could choose to side with him, or you could choose to side with the Vanguard. I did it uh, different for each character. Uh, I think I mostly sided for Vanguard, but sided with the Drifter on my Titan. Because so I thought, yeah, let's just do this, just spicing things up a bit. Um, other than that, it's really cool. Another thing I also forgot to add was the Destiny um, uh, limited time events, like the uh, Festival of Lost and stuff. You never know. Maybe next time, like, if you guys want me to do this again, like, when the next major DLC releases and change the list up, then you know I will. But for now, we're going to talk a bit about Penumbra. Now, you may be like, wait, you talk about Penumbra before it releases? Well, yeah, pretty much it's coming out in, like, two weeks anyway. And they've told us a lot of the shit that's happening in it. Now, automatically, though, with the update coming with it, it gets an automatic decline. Um, people are going to probably say that's bullshit because it's not even out. But I, I, I also don't have a tier that says uh, not released, so, yeah. And I was also going to put Destiny 3 in the list just to put it in the tags, but I didn't. But I said it there so I could put it in the tags. But Penumbra seems really interesting to me, how we're going back to the whole um, uh, Emperor Callus, the Leviathan type thing. My like I know we have the raid coming, which is uh, Crown of Sorrow. And we also have um, uh, Benedict, I think, as a vendor now, like, for the whole DLC. But what would be really cool, in my opinion, if, like, Penumbra introduced the Leviathan as a kind of mini Dreadnought. Like, I'm not in, I'm not suggesting that it should be an entirely new Dreadnought, because, like, that'd be just too much. But I'd love the actual, um, I just would love to actually see a proper Dreadnought, or eh, a mini Dreadnought. In a thing. I know you can already go there. Like if you just click on the. Um, the original first one. And go to the underbelly. That's literally in and upon itself a dreadnought. 
would be cool, you know, to see the area actually active or something. Maybe, like, SIVA peeps have gone on it and fighting. Or maybe even, like, other cabal from across the system have been like, Nah, Callus, screw you, we're gonna fight against you, you know? And we see all the green cabal again. But, you know, I think that'd be actually really cool. So, yeah, that, that gets a the more up. But pretty much this is... <coughs> Don't take this as my final rank. This is just my current rank based on what I hear and what I've seen about this DLC. Um, but yeah, overall, I can't wait for that one. Because June 1st is my birthday, so I get to play it in three days' time after my birthday. Yay! Oh, sorry, just need a stretch. So, here it is, guys. Here's my... Uh, Final tier list for now. Nothing's a D worthy. Uh, of course, Curse of Osiris is F. We have Rise of Iron, Destiny 2, and the uh, Black Army DLC all in C. We have the original Destiny, uh, Joker's Wild, and Penumbra in B. That's not final. In A, we have the uh, Dark Below, uh, House of Wolves, and the uh, Warmind DLC in A. Forsaken in S. And of course, the Taken King SS. If you were, if you were expecting me to put this any lower, I don't think you know me, to be honest. But you'd probably be like, why didn't you put this higher? Well, you know, it's just the way it is. So yeah, again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you'd like to see another tier list video or another Destiny tier list video, please let me know. I could do weapons, I could do secret quests, I could add shit to this, like maybe the DLC or um, uh, events in Destiny. Maybe even the April update, because that's another one I forgot, which... I probably would have put in like around here because it's really fucking good that. But yeah, again, thanks for watching and goodbye.